Welcome to another UCL Fantasy team selection video. Ahead of match day four, I'm going to be reviewing match day three, talking about what went right, what went wrong, and how I can push forwards. And I'll be talking about my transfer plans. I'm one of those people who had Adan and he was sent off. I couldn't substitute him out as a result. And I have to find a replacement for him. And also, I'm going to be deciding what my second transfer will be because I've got quite a few options, but there's nothing that really stands out to me at the moment. And if you have any ideas of your own and any suggestions for my team, then be sure to leave it down in the comment section below. And let's try to get this video to over 300 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 16,000 subscribers. But without further ado, let's get straight into this video. I scored 79 points on the wildcard in match day three and actually 80 as well with the limitless in match day two. So it was match day one that really set the platform for me and match day two actually brought me into the top 2k but I've got a 3,000 red arrow as a result of the wild card, and there are two players who really cost me this week and that's Adan who got sent off and that's one of the worst goalkeeping performances you'll ever see. He got sent off as well so I couldn't substitute him out for Lunin who only got two points but that's a difference of six because of how poor Adam was which is ridiculous and De Bruyne who I brought in as a substitute on the Wednesday and he didn't even feature at all against Copenhagen so that was a big mistake and I had the likes of Kostic there with six points and Musiala who I took off with four points so the Tuesday went very well for me apart from Adan but on the Wednesday things weren't as great to be honest and I had to just deal with it because I think at that point before the Wednesday games I was around 900th in the world but there you go uh, let's wait and see what I can do in the weeks to come I think I can get back to that position and that's where I roughly finished last season but if we go for it one by one Adam of course is the one I need to get rid of he is the absolute standout favorite and you look at Lunin as well I think he'll start in match day four based on Ancelotti's comments and it looks like Courtois might not travel to Warsaw for Shakhtar Donetsk but then you look at the other side of the spectrum he will be available for El Clasico next weekend but Ancelotti said that it might not be worth the risk to have him travel so Lunin should live to fight another day but in the long term my goalkeepers are a problem and I definitely need to get rid of Adam you look at my defense as well Simicas is good but how long is he going to keep on starting with Robertson on the cusp of returning and we will see if he starts against Arsenal today or not and after that we can start to evaluate Simicast in a bit more detail. You've got Joao Cancelo who is going to start most games and there might be the odd benching within the next three match days because Manchester City will probably qualify very soon. Then you've got Upamancana who is the best Bayern Munich defender right now. You've got Alfonso Davis injured, Lucas Hernandez as well and Bayern don't really have too many defensive options at the moment so Upamancana is the standout. I've also got Carvajal who I'm very happy with as well as Kostic who is a decent option for this match day but not so much in match days five and six so really when I look at my defense Simicas and Kostic are the ones that I really look at and think they could be changed within the next few weeks but the goalkeeper position is the big priority in the midfield Kravacelia I'm very happy with him and Guis is another one around his price who is fantastic but Kravacelia is probably the best offensively and he finally showed his class to another level in match day three with his 10 pointer Leroy Sane was my captain on the first day as well so very pleased of what he's done but when you look at it as well he was very very unfortunate not to get a 17 pointer with two extra points for the clean sheet and playing 60 minutes and also he probably would have won man of the match if he had stayed on the pitch a little bit longer could have scored and I'm very happy with it because in the end Napoli absolutely destroyed Ajax 6-1 but going forwards I do prefer Anguissa over Kudus but I'm actually not able to afford it at the moment and I'll have to make other kind of changes and downgrades elsewhere to be able to afford that Kevin De Bruyne was obviously the big disappointment which I talked about before and there's not much you can do about that but we do get the lineups heading into the Tuesday deadline the 5.45 kickoff between Manchester City and Copenhagen we get the lineups and that is great news so if De Bruyne doesn't start I think that will be my second transfer for sure on top of Adan so I'm going to be talking about that in the transfer section later on Haaland scored twice but will substitute around the half time mark and I'm actually very happy with it because a lot of people would have captained him after maybe a poor Tuesday captaincy option and I'm actually happy that he got subbed off and obviously his effective ownership and overall ownership is actually ridiculous at this point Mbappe was very disappointing and it was Messi who scored a great goal Mbappe was involved in the build-up but no returns for him this time and Jokla was probably the star for me a 12-pointer the only one to win man of the match in my squad and he's been absolutely fantastic and he offers insane value another one who got sobbed off at halftime was Musiala and that was a big shame because I think he actually had the ceiling to do a really good job in match day three I think he could have got a double digit return there he also uh, took part in the Classica 
during the weekend and he also got another goal involvement there so he's been fantastic this season and it's just a bit of a shame because you also have Bellingham who stole the show and he was the actual 7 million midfielder to go for in the end but I think Musiala could have matched him if he had stayed on the pitch so overall when you look at this team it is very good and there's only a few problems with it but as I briefly alluded to Adan has to go Kevin De Bruyne might also be another problem if he doesn't start once again against Copenhagen which is definitely possible with Liverpool on the verge and looming over Manchester City during the weekend. That will be their next opponent in the Premier League. And then you look at other issues. Simicast could make way for Robertson as well. And apart from that, I think everything else is fairly fine, except for Kostic and maybe Kudus as well, because there are better alternatives compared to those players. But they're still really good, especially Kudus. You've also got Musiala, who might not be as good as Bellingham, but he is still a really good option in his own right. So that was my match day three performance, 79 points. I've got 275 overall, and I got a 3,000 red arrow, unfortunately, but I can get back to where I was, but I need to sort out these issues, and hopefully no more ridiculously bad luck, like with Adan and just for those of you that aren't aware, you cannot substitute players off if they get a red card. And obviously that is a huge shame. He was the one that I was desperate to get rid of from my starting 11. But there you go. Now I'm going to look ahead to my match day four team selection without any transfers. And then looking ahead to what I'm looking to do to rectify my errors and also the weaknesses in my squad. Be sure to check out my How to Play UCL Fantasy Guide. It's still applicable in 2022. So if you're unsure about anything, then be sure to go to that video. I've got seven players playing on the 11th of October. So Lunin, Kostic, Carvajal, Joao Cancelo, Kevin De Bruyne. Let's see if he actually starts. And then Erling Haaland and Mbappe. But the rest will be playing on the 12th. And be sure to have everyone who plays on the Tuesday in your starting 11. And for your captain to be someone playing on the Tuesday. Because you can change this during the substitution window, you can change the captaincy and also make substitutions to players that haven't played yet on the Wednesday. So be sure to check all of that out and be sure how the game works. But this is looking in pretty good shape, apart from Adan, so not really having a second goalkeeper. Let's see what the situation is with Courtois, but it looks like Lunin should start once again in match day four. And then for match days five and six, that's where you would expect Courtois to be back between the sticks. And apart from that, the rest looks fairly solid. Let's also see a few other kind of injury problems. What will happen with Robertson? Is he going to play in the Champions League midweek? It'll be very interesting to see. Hopefully he doesn't. And that will be obviously very good news for my team. So I've got maybe two to four players that I'd like to get rid of potentially. But some of them might not be immediate sells. They might be sells in match days five or six instead. So things are looking pretty good. But as things stand, my captains would be Erling Haaland on the 11th and probably Leroy Sané on the 12th. And I talked about this in the Best Limitless and Wildcard Team videos. Be sure to check both of them out. And those could also help you a lot, even if you aren't playing those chips. And now let me show you which transfers I'm looking to make. And once again, the second transfer is actually up in the air and I haven't decided on that yet. I think a fairly easy switch would be Minule in for Adan and how I wished I did that move instead because I would have gained actually 10 points with Minule getting a clean sheet and 6 points instead of Adan getting minus 4 but I never actually expected Club Rouge to be as good as they are and of course they've got 3 clean sheets in 3 Champions League games and they're top of their group with Atletico Madrid being bottom but with Adan Sporting Lisbon were looking pretty good actually and they were keeping clean sheets as well a bit similar to Club Rouge but in the end it was Adan who just absolutely let his team down. And Minile is the best goalkeeper, especially in terms of value. So he is the one that's definitely going to be coming into my team, I believe. But then the second transfer, what do I do? Well, if De Bruyne is out and he doesn't start against Copenhagen in match day four, then I will get rid and I'll probably go to another premium. And I am looking at Vinicius Jr., who I had for the first few match days of the season. And he's the safest option, the one I trust the most, but I could still go a bit different and go for someone like Sadio Mane as well. But I also already have Upamancano, Musiala and Leroy Sane. So that would also involve another potential transfer. So I think Vinicius Jr. would be the safest and it would prevent further headaches down the road. But apart from that, let's say if De Bruyne does start, then things do get a bit tricky because I'd want to keep him and I think he's a better option than Vinicius if he does get the minutes that he deserves. But then I've got 0 0.2 million in the bank. What could I do? I'm actually 0 0.1 million short of doing Musiala to Bellingham, which I wouldn't mind doing this week. And I also wouldn't be able to do Kudos up to Anguissa, which is another transfer and player I recommended on the wildcard. So be sure to check out the best wildcard team video. I'm happy with the forwards. I don't think I'd change that anyway. 
no matter what chip I was using this week, maybe the Limitless, I wouldn't go for Jukla. And the rest, maybe Simicas, I would also love to maybe move up to Guerrero. But once again, I'm 0.1 million short. So a lot of the players that I would like to have and maybe cover potential headaches further down the road, like Simicas and maybe Musiala, it actually is a bit frustrating because I don't have the funds exactly to get Mignolet or on top of the players I need in those respective positions, which also would be very helpful for my team going forward. So at the moment, Mignolet in for Adan is the easy transfer. Vinicius in for De Bruyne would also be fairly simple if De Bruyne was benched and we'll get the lineups, of course, before the Tuesday deadline. Be sure to tune in for the deadline stream there in match day four. But otherwise, if De Bruyne does start, I'm actually just completely baffled in terms of what other transfers I could make Kostic could be someone I could downgrade and that could help me going forwards to get some other players I want in match days five and six. But let me know your thoughts on what you would recommend for my team. And if you have any issues of your own, then be sure to also leave that down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's get this video to over 300 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 16,000 subscribers. So thank you very much to everyone who's already done so and all the channel members and patrons. We have over 60 of those as well. So thank you very much. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM, and you can also become a patron or a channel member. The links are in the description below. The same goes for the UCL Fantasy League and the Discord server. All of that is there. I wish you all the best of luck for Match Day 4 and the rest of the season. And I'll see you next time.